All right, guys, welcome to our new series, Civilization VI for Noobs. That's right, I'm a noob. I'm brand new to this, not brand new, but relatively new to this series and game itself, Civilization, but particularly Civilization VI. My goal is to try to learn this game um, and maybe give you a noob perspective. We're going to learn the game together. Um, obviously, I've been playing for a few months now, so I do know a bit of things. My main goal is to focus on three things. First of all, city planning, um, how we plan our cities and how we determine where do we put districts, where do we settle new civilizations, um, things like that. We'll try to answer those questions. Additionally, how do we achieve certain win conditions? I know it's diff difficult in civilization to complete a full game. <clears throat> so we're going to look at how we can do that. Um, how does a science win work? How does a religion win work? How does a domination win work? I will let you know ahead of time that I am more of the player who likes to play long-term games. I like overall score wins. I like science wins, I like culture wins, I like different things like that. Um, so domination will be something we discuss, but it won't be the primary thing that we focus on, um, as I think there's a lot of elements of civilization that are more fun than just outright combat. <clears throat> but yeah, I appreciate y'all tuning in, I hope you like this, this is going to be an ongoing series. Um, we're going to actually start it out right now uh, with a single player game. So we're going to load a new game. Uh, actually, let's go back. We're going to create a new game. So I am going to actually focus on um, a civilization which I think has a lot of potential. Uh, and that's going to be the Maori. So the Maori, you begin the game in an ocean tile. The really big advantage um, when you settle your city, you get a free builder and plus one population. Um, basically, the palace, um, which is a building for the, uh, for the Maori... Uh, they get plus three housing, plus one amenity, plus two science and culture per turn before you settle your first city. So it's it's a lot of additional things you're gaining while you're still on the ocean tiles. You automatically start the game with two very key technologies, sailing and shipbuilding, which means all land units can embark, including settlers, so you can settle multiple continents relatively easy, as well as very important island cities which i will get to uh with this uh with this playthrough um embark units gain plus two movement so they get into the sea very quickly and unimproved woods and rainforests are have an additional production um and if you have mercantilism you have an additional two production if you have conservation fishing boats uh which is improved tiles with fishing um gain plus one food and culture and and gives a culture bomb to adjacent tiles um, resources cannot be harvested. Great riders cannot be earned. So there's a couple things that you can't do, but overall I think the benefits far outweigh the negatives. There's a couple unique buildings and units. So the Marae, it's a building unique to the Maori. You get plus one culture and faith. Um, all of this city's tiles with a passable feature or a natural wonder. After flight is researched, receive plus one tourism to all of city's tiles with a feature or natural wonder. Cost no maintenance, has no great work slots. Cool. Really cool unit, the Toa, I want to say. Or I want to hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a Maori unique classical area melee unit. Um, adjacent enemy units perceive minus five combat strength. Can build a PA improvement. And the PA, PA or PA, uh, I think it's called PA, unlocks the ability to construct a PA, a unique to Maori. Occupying unit receives plus four defense strength and automatically gains two unit turns of fortification. A Maori unit occupying a pay heals even if they just moved or attacked. Must be built on a heal tile. So I haven't utilized that too much, but hopefully that will be something we can try to do. Now keep in mind we are playing under the Gathering Storm expansion, so there are weather anomalies. Um, we do have heroes and things like that, which will be enabled. We're going to choose the game difficulty be king. Um, it's going to be standard game speed i don't want to rush through turns or anything like that i'm going to go ahead and put continents and islands a few large land masses surrounded by islands sounds good and the map size we're going to make standard we're not going to make it large or anything like that um the disaster intensity we're going to keep there as far as advanced setup we're going to start in the ancient era as typical 
Uh, resources are standard. Natural wonders can be anything. Um, pretty much everything is going to be standard. I mean, we're not going to do anything crazy. All victories are enabled. Um, no duplicate civilizations. No duplicate leaders. We're going to keep barbarians and tribal villages available. Um, so we're going to go back. And then we're going to start the game, guys. Let's get it going. All right. So like I said, one of my major things, guys, that I want to try to learn with you um, is how do we settle cities? How do we determine where we want to settle the as the Maori? the first of life beneath second. water to the great beast Can't interrupt Sean the Bean's beautiful voice, man. To man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Coupe the Navigator. You named the land of the Long White Cloud. And now you are called upon to settle new lands. Protect and honor the land and sea. Just as your towers protect your people. The Maori will guard the world's natural beauty for all the ages after. Sweet. All right, Maori makes history. The discovery of shipbuilding sets the world stage for future discoveries in the classical era. So you do start immediately um, with some era score, plus two era score. Now, one thing I want you guys to kind of look at is a couple things that I've enabled here. So obviously, you need to pay attention to the right-hand side. It'll tell you uh, basically what is going on in the game from you or your opponents. It'll also let you know sometimes you may not realize when people have offered you deals or when people have you know reached out to you for a comment or an alliance or even declared war so you want to keep an eye on this it'll also let you know up here in the era progress uh where you're at so the first era um is going to be between 40 and 60 turns um we're currently at age uh, score two because of that initial two technologies we have we're trying to get to a golden age because a golden age basically is going to give us our citizens more loyalty um, and we're going to get better effects um, so that's whenever we uh, get to the new era we can kind of set a dedication um, and get some pretty insane bonuses uh, what we're going to do is also let you know right here once we meet other civilization I'll give you another example but right here in the top right hand corner um, this is our kingdom now we can always go to the rankings and see the score of us and right now a bunch of unmet players which eventually will be civilizations um, and we can look at it as a science culture and pretty much break it down to see where we rank across all categories um, in the top left hand corner is where you access your tech tree your civics tree your great people which you will earn points towards and hopefully recruit many of those to advance our era of progress and overall just expand our culture and influence and you can also pull up the world climate tile this will kind of be more applicable later in the game as co2 levels rise and as we need to look at rain and other activity like from volcanoes and droughts and things like that there is obviously a governor's tile as well governors will be crucial in our game depending on how we want to shape our cities is what kind of governors we want to have over them and we also would like to upgrade our governors, um, but not too quickly. We need to make sure it's in line with our current era and taking advantage of all of that. So that's pretty much it, guys, as far as what's going on on the map. I mean, you'll notice that one thing I do have enabled is on the tiles themselves. I do have the yields. Um, so you'll kind of see that's going to be really crucial to where we settle cities and also where we put our districts. If you want to enable that, I believe you have to go under okay that's the strategy view um, if you go under map options you can go ahead and show resource icons uh, which I do recommend doing um, and you can also disable yield and enable yield icons which I recommend recommend there are map tags as well uh, map tags are very key so you can actually click a tile and you can kind of just plan your city so you can say I want to put a harbor here uh, or I want to put a campus district or possibly an encampment based on what's around um, obviously these types of things will automatically pop up depending on the thing like great merchant great profits different things like that but it's something that you also want to go ahead and utilize to plan your cities a lot of P 
people don't do that. I've recently started to try to do that a little bit more just so we can have a plan and a game uh, and, a, and a plan of action. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and we're going to go ahead and start. So when you're starting as Maori, you want to make sure that you find a landmass quickly. Now remember, as part of our bonus, um, as we are in the palace, we have plus three housing and plus one amenity. We gain plus two science and culture per turn before we settle our city. So we're still gaining culture, as you can see up here, and, and science per turn, even on the water. But we do want to go ahead and utilize our, build, our um, warriors to go ahead and scout to see if there's anything in the area. So we do see a fish tile here, which means there could potentially be some land in this direction. So we're going to go down here and see what we have. Okay, so we do have some kind of islands here. Um, which is going to be indicative of possibly maybe something more serious in this direction as far as a continent and just look at the tiles guys so a rice tile an unimproved rice tile is going to provide you for three food that is a lot of food but if it's improved it can provide even more don't forget to look at the ocean tile yield sometimes you will get production out of that sometimes you will get additional gold or food and remember surplus food is going to be key in growing our city so we need to make sure that we're also researching that when you want to get rid of some of these updates in the right hand corner you can go ahead and just right click them so we can free up the space there <clears throat> and we're gonna go to turn two so we're gonna go ahead and have this guy come a little bit further down here and we're gonna see some nice production tiles over here that I can possibly see a city being built at so let's go ahead and follow over here. We do have a little island offshoot here. But we're going to go ahead and try to get on the land here and see what we can do. I like to settle near um, production. Ooh, and we got our first tribal village. So that's awesome. So based on how this area is, there's a production, you know, a little reef here, a coastal um, reef here that provides production. We have land and other areas that provide production um, I'm going to go ahead and scout down here but I'm gonna go ahead and send my settler up here so that way we can kind of get further inland and see if there's a slightly better place to go so we do have sheep as a resource and it looks like there's some mountainous areas up here so what I'd like to do is get a bit further in um, obviously we don't want to take forever but we do need to find a proper city to get our first civilization going and we are earning culture and science per turn to help boost once we do settle <sighs> so i think where we want to build our first city and again we're going to want to city plan here is probably in this area because we can get additional production out of the forest here we can expand along the coast there's some gold opportunity with these crab tiles um and we even have a decent second city over here so what i'm going to do is uh, we're going to use these map tacks. Remember, guys, we're going to use these map tacks. And we are going to go ahead and place... Oh, delete that. We're going to go ahead and add a tack right here. Because this is probably going to end up being our first city. And let me find that tack really quick uh, right here. So that'll be an ideal spot for that. Um, and most likely we'll have a harbor down here. We have the crab tiles um, and even animal husbandry could possibly be something we want to research early on. We are going to go ahead and place a harbor tack right here because this will likely be our harbor district right there. We have production, so we'd get the adjacency bonus right here for that additional production. And then I think we could possibly go ahead and get a faith site here right next to the mountain. We're going to get an additional uh, holy site bonus for being adjacent to a mountain and we could possibly even put a campus here it depends on exactly how we want to go about things but we are going to go ahead and probably settle right here and this would be a decent city for us okay we have the ability to put a farm here and i did just discover this incense tile but we're going to go ahead and we're going to improve this crab tile so that we can get additional food from this so now that's a very very nice three food three gold tile and we're gonna go ahead and turn this ta uh, thing off here as well uh, the first thing we usually want to build in, the, in, the, in this kind of city is going to be either either a scout or a monument um, depending on how you want to go about it monuments can provide obviously dedications towards heroes but I think what we want to get immediately is a 
scout. It's a quick build time, and because of the production, we should be good. And we're going to obviously take this, which is actually give us a free scout, so we can change that. That's really nice. And we can go ahead and produce another settler. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and scout up here and see what we got going on to our, I guess, west or east. Yeah, west. <laughs> I always forget that. Uh, we're looking to also hopefully find some natural wonders. So now that we have that, um, we will do want to kind of just venture back and see what we have on the other side. We do need to go ahead and start our research. Um, and considering that we have incense available, um, which could be a potentially valuable resource, I think we should go ahead and research pottery. Um, we do need to consider what wonders and things we'd like to build. So there is a river, which will be a nice spot for probably a future city. We might want to have a great bath, which will give us not only a immunity to flood damage, but we'll gain plus one faith each time a flood damage is mitigated. We get additional housing and amenities from that as well. So we can kind of prevent things. Now, if we do want to build a holy site, um, we can, but we're kind of wanting to do these Eurekas. So for those who are newer, um, there are the options to go ahead and boost uh, by a certain number of turns when you achieve these little side quests on the bottom of these and you'll even see these with um, civics as well so if we can find a natural wonder we can boost this so for now I think what we should do um, I'm trying to see here whether we should go for animal husbandry or we should go for pottery I think we'll go ahead and go for pottery because we're gonna need irrigation um, either way so I think we should go for pottery first perfect and we're gonna go to next turn here so we've automatically discovered Congo cool it is an honor to meet you we would love to sample your hospitality so Congo is very rare very close to us so we do need to keep in mind that this city that we were going to build might be a bit dangerous um, and you do want to always go to when you discover a new uh, empire you do want to go to the top right and you do want to kind of see what their agendas are okay because that's how you can keep them happy so he likes civilizations that bring religion to Congo dislikes civilizations that have founded a religion but not brought it to a Congolese city plus he has a hidden agenda as well um, we need to go ahead and see what deals we can make. We don't really have much to offer in either way, so we're not going to do anything like that. Um, and we don't have enough money right now to send a delegation. So let's just continue uh, scouting up here. And we actually found another tribal village. Now there's a bunch of salt tiles, which obviously are going to be additional gold, and there's our luxury resources, which we can utilize to trade. We're going to go ahead and improve this tile as well to get us additional food. In Celestial Navigation, we have achieved that Eureka bonus, so we will be able to utilize that, um, which means we'll be able to kind of expand a little bit further off coast and things like that. Okay, and with our warriors, we're going to continue scouting up here and seeing what we could do as far as the city in this area. So far, looks pretty solid. We're going to go ahead and close some of these off. And click next turn. So this would be a good spot for a city right here, although it is close to Congo. We might have to end up taking over Congo relatively quickly because there's gonna they're gonna stifle our means to expand inland. Um, let's do that. Uh, oh, sorry, put that back. We're gonna add a tack here for a city center. We're also gonna add a tack over here for a possible city center here. Um, but just because the production tiles and all of these additional there is a drop going on currently over here but uh, let's go ahead and send our uh, builder up here so we can get additional um, housing from our farm Boom. craftsmanship has been boosted so we're going to remove this tack for now uh, for the holy site I think instead we're probably going to want to put some kind of campus district 
here, and I do think it gets some adjacency bonus for the reefs and things like that and in the jungle. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put a campus district here. So we're going to want to make sure that when we look at our tech tree that we are progressing towards riding, which riding we've already boosted, so we'll be able to get it relatively quickly. I actually think we might skip irrigation, and we might go straight to riding, but we shall see uh, exactly how that progresses. So next turn. Let's see what this city-state gives us. I'm sorry, this uh, this tribal village. Okay, we have discovered a barbarian encampment. Uh, 23 turns. Okay, let's look at the city itself. So it's gonna take quite a while to get a settler out of, out of this city. Um, we need to go ahead and send our barbarians up here. We got three turns for code of law, so we do want to kind of wait to get the uh, card. Uh, it looks like there's a city state up here. We're gonna want to take care of this barbarian encampment relatively quickly so that we can um, expand. It's saying it's gonna take 23 turns, but if we get additional production, uh, we could probably lower that um, as far as purchasing with gold or purchasing additional tiles. We could purchase some additional tiles um, and get some additional production, particularly um, if you trying to see here. There's quite a few gold tiles near the city. Um, some really nice uh, tiles for reefs as well. We could purchase that, but I think what we'll do is we'll hold off um, and we will try to see if we can get something a little bit better. <clears throat> I think there's a city state that we're going to discover up here so yeah this is our city state so we always want to take a look at the city state tab which is the second button up here on the right and there's a little quest here so we need to trigger a eureka moment for engineering and we'll get additional envoys fortunately there's not much we can go down here so we're going to go ahead and move this unit down Okay, next turn. No man ever wetted clay. All right, so we are done with that. We need to go ahead and research writing so that we can get the campus districts and science for turn. Get those great scientists as well, so really boost that along. Um, obviously, we're gonna eventually put a harbor here, but that's a little bit down the tech tree. If you look down the tech tree to get a harbor, we need to go ahead and research celestial navigation which is going to require us to get astrology. So astrology will probably be one of the things coming up after we do riding and irrigation. Riding will give us the ability to unlock currency um, and we can boost that by getting a trade route, which we will most likely research next in the civic street. After this, I think um, we have the option to do either craftsmanship or foreign trade. It is not wisdom. Okay, so we're gonna put plus five unit when fighting barbarians and plus one production in our cities. We should be able to beat this. So our civic we're going to go ahead and focus on would be I mean we want to get trade routes going pretty quickly. But I feel like craftsmanship can help boost our uh, builders as well. So we're going to go with craftsmanship since we've already boosted that a little bit. Next turn. <clears throat> and let's try to attack this barbarian encampment again. We should do relatively well against this just because we do have the additional um, stuff. Now we do notice that our Congo neighbors are going to have diamonds. Two tiles of diamonds actually, which is really nice for them. So we do want to keep an eye on that as well. <laughs> and 
we got some error score for clearing that. Okay, next turn. Alright, so they sent us a delegation. We want to always return the favor there, so let's send a delegation to him. And then we'll declare friendship. Not ready to... That's our relationship right in first. Okay, let's make a deal. Nothing to really offer him at this point, so... Okay. We're going to go ahead and promote our warriors next turn. Fortify. Okay. And we're going to continue scouting down here to see what we can find. So there's some silk tiles down here. A lot of crab tiles, so that's going to definitely boost our gold earnings. I still think this would be a solid area just considering the marsh tile and all of these tiles that surround it. So I think that'll be most likely where we settle our first city. Um, there's also the option to settle it right on this sheep tile, right around the jungles, and you just get a ton of production. But I like this tile because I feel like we could put a harbor tile down here somewhere, um, and we could probably, obviously, have some encampment tiles or different things, or even a production um, uh, district down here as well. <clears throat> so next turn, we got five turns for the settler to go. We don't want to declare war. Let's see where some other areas to settle the city might be. Okay. And we finally unlocked incense uh, as an option. So we'll probably go for irrigation next turn so we can get that luxury resource. That'll allow us to trade and get a couple other things going. Oh, we do have the barbarians down here. Oh, there's some nice tiles down here. So there's a potential actually to have a city down here and get a lot of this jungle production and other tiles. Um, we'll have to consider that possibility uh, for probably our third city. Writing is easy. Alright, so now that we've researched that, let's go ahead and we're going to look at irrigation. Because that will give us the ability to go ahead and get that hanging gardens uh, wonder, which is obviously very useful. And we're going to continue scouting deeper down here towards the shore. So this would be a great area for a city right here. So we're going to add attack here as a city center also. Um, and then that would also give us the ability to put a harbor down here as well. We're going to add attack right here for the harbor district. Um, as far as other districts and stuff in this city, um, initially we'll probably just stick with those two. Although I think there would be a decent district right here for a government plaza um, or possibly... kind of looking at these. <clears throat> Probably put a... Uh, no, we can't put an encampment next to that. Uh, we'll have to figure that out in a, in a couple turns. But this would be a great spot for a city right here. I think our first city will most likely be here. But um, we can possibly do that also. Kind of scouting up here so we have our first settler so we can settle up here it's relatively close to congo it does have natural resources there is some great production tiles right there uh, obviously down here would be great um it's just kind of a lot of turns to get there right now um so i think right now the best thing to do 
would be to kind of stick with our original game plan and uh, send our settler down here. As far as production, um, so we have a couple options. I think the campus district would be great here. We're going to get plus two science here, um, which is great. You can kind of see that because of this um, jungle tile and, re and reef tile, as well as being adjacent to the uh, city. It helps us out uh, as far as this. So let's go ahead and delete that tag, and we're going to build a campus district right here. <laughs> and there's a tribal village for us. That's one advantage, they do have a lot of movement, uh, with your units whenever they depart and we just met I'm Sultan Musa, Sayyid Mali and with God, I'm a man who is 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 a man okay so we got envoys obviously we're going to send them to the only place we can right now but let's go ahead and look at our Mansa Lord of the Mines tries to maximize gold output from cities and trade routes. Respect civilization and acts similarly and just like those who don't. Okay, we'll send him a delegation. And let's go back to this guy. Okay. And we have a friendship right here, so we can guarantee that for a little while. Let's see if this guy wants to do a friendship. <laughs> Okay, that's yeah, pretty early for that, but just to see. Let's continue going upward, up north. See what we can do as far as an expansion there. And we're going to continue uh, working our expansion down here. Uh, no fresh water. Let's just go down here for now and we'll see what we want to do. There is a barbarian here, so we do need to make, care, make sure we don't get this unit stolen next turn. Okay, and we're gonna go back down here and see where our dude's at. Aw, oh, someone sniped it from us, man. That sucks. Next turn. Skill without imagination is craftsmanship and gives us many useful objects. We'll keep our, uh, up the same. Uh, guess we'll do foreign trade. And we'll go ahead and settle here. Here's another city state. Alright, and then as far as the production, we're going to, I guess, use our money real quick to purchase a builder, so we can go ahead and improve some of these tiles as far as the production level. Um, I think the best thing to build right off the bat would most likely be a... Yeah, we can build a granary.
So one thing you can do that I learned recently is it's managing your cities, your cities and your citizens. So what we need to do in this situation is basically there's a couple of tabs down here. You can look at your overall city details. You can basically go down and you can determine how much of your food is being um, utilized essentially. Um, obviously you want surplus food in order to grow. Um, but you also want to, you can also work different tiles in order, in order to, uh, increase production. So right now I'm focusing on production so I can get this camper district out, but you can also just unselect that and then they'll do more of a balanced approach. And then you can see here that the growth is a little bit higher, um, but I can work specific tiles by clicking manage citizens. Uh, the best thing I think is if you're trying to just focus on production, but then so now they're going to work this production tile, this production tile, and this production tile. But then you can lock this one. I'm oh, sorry. You can lock this tile and have them work on this. And then you can go back to your city details, and you're getting a total uh, food surplus of one while still maximizing the production. So there is some ability to kind of mess with that a bit to see if you can get higher production out of your cities. <coughs> so irrigation will finish in a little while. Let's go ahead and see how our city is doing. We're trying to maximize production to get this granary out. So obviously we're going to still have a food surplus because we have a ton of food tiles in this in this little city here. This reef tile and fish tile will be decent for us to acquire as well. We do have a banana tile and a silk tile relatively close to this city. Um, so we do have a third city already identified. So I think the next thing we'll probably be working on is getting a third settler. Guys generating 400 has 412 gold. It's pretty crazy. Relatively decent so far, guys. I'm just gonna sleep him here so we can improve this um, cattle tile uh, once we finish irrigation in a few turns. some kind of glacier here. Bringing our first district online has proven the value of conscripting workers for state projects. Your progress towards state workforce has advanced considerably. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have that, we do have the ability to go ahead and start working on a bath. We would have to uh, do this, but I think it's worthwhile to go ahead and start on a wonder here. And then we're going to go to manage our citizens, and right now we are focusing completely on production. Uh, so we should be able to continue doing that. Uh, we can purchase some additional production from this reef um, here or this uh, jungle tile. But I think right now it's fine. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it how it is. We want to save up our money a bit so that we could possibly build some units with it. A builder would be great. All right, sorry about that. And we got to kind of reach the extent of what we can do up here. So let's scout back down. Thousands have lived without love. Irrigation is done. So let's take a look at the tech tree. Now that irrigation is done, we can actually go ahead and backtrack. We want to get astrology so that we can get celestial navigation. And to boost it, we need to find a natural wonder. So let's go ahead and go back to our research. And we're going to research astrology. Now, animal husbandry is also a consideration. 
Um, let's go ahead and do animal husbandry so we can go ahead and pasteurize some of those resource tiles we have. We met China. Probably honestly take this camp um, just to get this additional barbarian outpost. We're already kind of, you know, suited for that. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of scout the coast here a little bit. After this is done, we'll probably start production on a. Granary. I'm sorry, I'm not on my granary on something else. Some actually good tiles over here too. Wouldn't be a bad consideration of eventually put a city like right here in this harbor. Maybe right here to take advantage of this uh, always pearl tile and some of these additional tiles up here as well. Production right there. So, something to consider. There are no dogs in here. Okay, so now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and do astrology. And as far as the production out of this one, we do want to eventually get some districts and things like that. But we're going to wait to probably do a harbor district in this area. So I think what we need to go ahead and get is we need to get a next settler out. And it'll be a close proximity to this. So let's go ahead and we're going to do this. Uh... fortify up a little bit before we attack them again uh, we're gonna go ahead back here and we're still focusing on production um, so our work tiles are still being the primary ones being worked our production tiles so we're actually doing probably quite good on production right now for this if we would like to we could go ahead and purchase maybe one of these reef tiles or actually we could probably purchase this silk tile how much would that cost That could be a potential uh, tile for us uh, later on as well. We will get this one eventually as well, so we'll be able to build a builder here to improve some of these tiles. Uh, and then most likely we're going to put a harbor district in. Uh, most likely here would be a harbor, nice harbor district. And then we'll probably end up uh, putting an encampment right here. Or, uh, sorry, right here. <clears throat> Next turn. And so far, guys, Signe Ooh, nice. is a 250 square mile tiger trap made up of massive obelisks. Riddle. So that our Eureka and boost our astrology. Perfect. Perfect timing there. Uh, which we were already studying that. Now remember, a holy site potential is going to probably be here. So once we get the great bath done, we might actually go ahead and put a holy tile here next to the mountain. Uh, and incense to get double adjacency bonuses off of that holy site. I think so. Let's go ahead and we're going to remember to continue our city planning, um, which is something I'm personally trying to improve upon. We're going to put our holy site tile there. I think that's where we're going to put a holy site. And actually, wow, we actually get a triple adjacency bonus because we're going to be next to double incense and the mountain tile. So great. Um, we're going to go ahead and plan this city to be our harbor and encampment district which is going to give us additional production gold and great general we're going to put it right here next to these two husbandry tiles which should give us additional um uh 
resources as well. Um, as far as other things in this district, we or the city, I'm not sure as of yet, but right now we do have plans for an encampment. And I guess we can go ahead and put down right here, which is going to be our harbor. <coughs> right there so we have two districts planned for each city we have a city option which I guess we can go ahead and delete here um, I think we could probably put a city here uh, it's just gonna have kinda low production at first it wouldn't even hurt to put a city right here because we're gonna have production tiles um, then we can take advantage of the salt so yeah let's go ahead and put a city center here it won't be on the coast, but this one would be nice because we'll be able to do some additional district building over here. Maybe a production district up here. We're going to have these luxury resources. It's going to generate some income. And not too far we can get fresh water from. So uh, we got a few cities planned, guys, as you can see here. So this is basically the start of the video, guys. Um, I'm going to continue this series. I'm actually going to film a couple sessions of that right now. Uh, but so far, what we've done is we built two cities. We actually have some city planning, which is one of our primary goals, is to plan our cities a little bit more strategically. So right now, we are going to be putting a harbor district in. We're going to be putting a holy site. We have our encampment and harbor district planned here. We have a bunch of improved resource tiles. And animal husbandry is finished. Probably going to build a builder here to take advantage of the silk and sheep tiles. And then we're also going to be expanding up here to get some of these luxury resources and down here to take advantage of the diamonds and the additional food and production tiles in this area. I think obviously our next city will be right here. A couple things that we learned in this video is you know how to plan our cities, also how to work our tiles more efficiently um, by going to the Manage Citizens tab and actually focusing the produ on production or focusing on food depending on whether we need to grow more or not. Right now, um, we're getting a total food surplus in this city of three. So we're growing every five turns, which is fine. If we want to focus more on food, we could probably grow the city even more rapidly. But right now, we are also producing a great bath on the river tile. So once we produce up here and towards these rivers, we won't have any flooding or anything like that to any of our river-based uh, floodplain tiles. That'll be it, guys, for this first video. Um, I will be continuing the series, like I said before, so please tune in. If you can help us out with a subscribe or click the bell, make sure you're getting notifications. We're going to be uploading multiple videos, um, focusing heavily on our YouTube side. You can also find us, Two Faced Gaming, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash two underscore faced underscore gaming. Um, and you can follow us there and see us stream this live. I do a lot of streaming of Civ 6 Live. I do a lot of streaming of mini games live. So we appreciate that. But that'll be it for the first video, guys. Two Face Crew, thank you. Two Face Gaming, out.